Welcome to the audio session at this year's RTC at Scale. My name is Sriram Srinivasan, and I'm joining you from our Seattle area office, where I lead engineering teams spread across various locations who work on audio technologies for real-time calling at Meta. WhatsApp is a regular part of my life. It's how I stay connected to my extended family around the world. It's how my kids stay in touch with their grandparents and cousins, just like billions of other people who use one of our apps, Instagram, Messenger, Facebook, and WhatsApp, to stay connected with their loved ones. It's a privilege to be able to come into work every day and improve the calling experience for our users. We worked very hard on revamping the core of our audio processing stack to deliver a great audio experience across all devices and networks. And I'm excited to share more details with you today. Delivering high quality audio using as few bits as possible has been an interesting challenge for the industry. I'd like to invite Jatin Kumar and Bikash Agarwala to walk us through how we solved that problem at Meta with MLO, Meta's new low bitrate audio codec. I worked closely with Jatin and Bikash for the last two years, and I'm incredibly proud of this work. Providing full band audio at bit rates as low as 4.2 kilobits per second, and roughly the same computational complexity or even a little bit lower than Opus. Jatin Kumar is a software engineer and tech lead for WhatsApp's calling audio team at Meta, where he has significantly improved audio quality for billions of users over the last three years. Prior to WhatsApp, Jatin spent three years scaling the core RPC routing library to millions of servers at Meta and improving its reliability. Jatin's leadership and technical expertise have been crucial in enhancing global communication through WhatsApp, showcasing his commitment to innovation and excellence in the tech industry. Bikash Agarwala is an engineering manager at WhatsApp working on calling products for more than four years. He has 15 plus years of experience building and growing various monetization and consumer products at Meta, such as calling, payments, donations, fundraisers, and more. He's motivated by the large impact his work has on a massive user base and focuses on key areas of RTC, such as audio and video processing and packet loss recovery. He holds a PhD in computer science from Georgia Tech. Over to you, Bikash. Thanks for the introduction, Sriram. We learned so much about how Meta removes echo and noise from your talk. The next important part of the audio pipeline is the encoder. We all know that rogue audio content is large, like hundreds of kbps, so compression is must. Codecs are used to compress the audio payload before they are transmitted to the other side. Similarly, a decoder is used to convert compressed audio back into the audio signal. The audio codec tries to balance various competing parameters such as complexity, quality, latency, battery consumptions, etc. As an example, an audio codec may be able to provide great quality audio with good compression but may be computationally too expensive. That may make it not usable for real-time communication use case. An ideal codec keeps the quality good while keeping complexity manageable. You may still wonder why we need a new codec. Lot of our users are still using low-end devices. For example, 2% of daily call on WhatsApp are on 10 plus year old devices. In the future, we also want to serve the population that may be coming to the internet for the first time on low end phones and on low end market. There are multiple codecs out there, but they don't fit our unique requirement. For example, Opus is a 11 plus year old codec that is currently used in production across our family of apps. While it met our basic needs, we are seeing evidence that users are struggling with audio quality in calls on low-end network and devices. Audio breaks, audio delays are some of our top reported user complaints for audio quality. LiRa and LiRa2 from Google are ML-based low bitrate codec. They are high on complexity, five to seven times more complex than Opus in encoding. There are other AI-based codec, including at Meta, which are well suited for streaming music, but not for voice calls. Therefore, we want to innovate in the codec technology by building the first audio codec that supports really low bitrate but without the added complexity in binary size or computation. So for the new codec, we started with few requirements. Number one, full band 48 kHz audio quality starting at 4.2 kbps and scaling to higher bitrate. Number two, light enough so that it runs on all devices that our users are on to support Meta's diverse user base. Computational complexity not greater than that of Opus complexity at mode 5. Flexible and extensible to support huge cases such as flexible FEC, special audio, group call, etc. And easier to integrate with reusing codec API as much as possible. We put extra emphasis on keeping complexity in check. This is based on the fact that 
We can come across many great sounding ultra low bitrate codecs, but unfortunately they don't work on end user devices due to often being very highly complex. For example, from experiments we know that a complexity increase by 90% has led to engagement drop of 0.3% and connection drop of 0.75%. Therefore, it is really critical to keep the complexity low while we optimize for quality. In practice, this meant using ML very judiciously without increasing complexity and doing lot of optimizations using traditional DSP techniques. Now I will hand it off to Jatin to talk more about the codec development. Thanks Bikash for answering why we need a new codec. Let's get to how we built it now. At the heart, MLO is a traditional calc based codec which uses linear predictive coding aka LPC to model the incoming speech signal. In the encoding process, it searches for the optimal model parameter such that the synthesized signal generated by the decoder will have minimum error. As a result, you can think the encoder internally runs parts of the decoder multiple times to find the best match. This is what usually makes a kelp encoder expensive than the decoder. This technique is not new and there is tons of public domain knowledge available on this. While using kelp allowed us to keep complexity in check from the beginning, our innovations around excitation coding, novel quantization methods and coding schemes allowed us to achieve high quality using very low bit rates. Digging into the high level codec design, we split the incoming signal into two frequency bands and treat them separately. It is worth noting that most of the speech content is in the low frequency band like 0 to 4 kHz and the higher frequencies are used to enrich the signal and provide a more natural sounding experience. So naturally, we spend more bits in encoding the low frequency bands as compared to the high band. With novel ideas and by sharing information between the low and the high bands, we are able to encode high band with less than 1 kilobit per second of overhead. This allows us to encode super wide band and full band content at very low bit rates. All the output from the two encoders is entropy coded into single bit stream and then sent out to the other side. On the decoder, we pretty much reverse the whole process. It starts by separating out the low and the high end signals from the encoded bit stream, then decodes them separately and then combines them to get the desired output audio signal. Designing a new codec from scratch is a really hard engineering problem. While the design looks simple, there are tons of details intentionally left out to keep it consumable for this talk. Next, let's look into how we were able to develop and iterate so fast. Developing a new codec requires a lot of experimental and throwaway work while trying out many different ideas. Although the final codec would have been in C or C++, we chose to do initial prototyping in Julia language. Think of Julia as a powerful combination of MATLAB and Python with an amazing collection of DSP libraries. It allows writing expressive code through first class support for vector operations. Once we had a working prototype in Julia, and it met our quality requirements. We started with Julia to C conversion. As we converted the modules one by one to C, we were able to call the C code from Julia and made sure everything continues to work well. Although Julia has a fast runtime, but it was only in C or C++ code base that we were able to get a true assessment of the codec complexity. As expected, it required us a few iterations to bring down the codec complexity to meet the low complexity bar we had set for ourselves. All of this while keeping the high quality. We had kept the Julia and the C implementations in sync, which again allowed us to quickly try out a few ideas to meet complexity requirements. Now that we had a working prototype, we were able to evaluate the codec and assess its quality. Codec development often requires using a large data set of diverse audio content so we are able to correctly capture the sound characteristics of different languages, gender, and surrounding environment. In some ways, it is similar to training a machine learning model and you don't want to overfit a certain segment of users. Given Meta's global scale, we had to ensure that the codec works for everyone in every scenario. 
So we used thousands of audio files distributed across various languages like English, Spanish, Italian, etc. with good representation of male, female and children voices. These languages represented Meta's user distribution. We synthesized and mixed various stationary and non-stationary noises with clean speech signal to represent users talking in moving cars, supermarkets and other noisy environments. Lastly, to test the certain codec features like packet loss concealment, we synthesized different types of lossy network conditions. While we were able to find good public datasets on wideband clean speech, there is not much speech content available with finer details like super wideband or full band. Meta ran a standalone program to collect full band speech content where users read out phrases and this allowed us to evaluate and test the codec for higher frequency content as well. We have collected an exhaustive data set and generated audio files with a new codec now. But how do we compare the quality of one codec with another? Let's see how we evaluate it. Perceptual audio quality is a very subjective metric and everyone perceives it differently based on their attention for details, age and surrounding environment. There are some objective audio evaluation tools like Whiskle and Polka, but you cannot rely on them 100% as these tools are not perfect. We adopted ITU standard P808 to perform crowdsource listening tests and get mean opinion score to rate audio quality on a scale of 1 to 5, with 1 being very poor to 5 being excellent. These tests required finding listeners in various languages, evaluating same file across multiple listeners to remove any listener bias and doing so across thousands of evaluation files. We were able to establish a high confidence in the process with the repeatable results across multiple runs. These tests are highly time consuming and often require multiple weeks of turnaround time and so these cannot be used very frequently. For everyday development, we relied on testing using a handful of audio files with manual listening and had an automated setup which ran objective tools like Whiskle Polka on each commit to provide a wider safety net across a large data set. After nearly 1.5 years of active development, we were able to finish the codec development and evaluation and ready to bring it to life. No codec talk is complete without a real demo. Please listen to the demo for yourself and compare how amazing the new codec sounds. We suggest that you use your favorite pair of headphones to truly appreciate the quality differences. This codec has original speech content followed by Opus running at 6kbps then MLO running at just 4.2kbps. Let's play the demo. We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, to ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote... I hope you were able to tell that MLO sounded much more crisp than Opus because we were able to capture higher frequency content as well on lower bit rates. What makes it really special is that MLO is able to achieve this using 10% less compute than Opus. This is very significant improvement as compared to most MLAI codecs which are 5 to 7x more complex than Opus. While you have heard the amazing quality yourself, let's see what the crowdsource listening tests have to say. We evaluated AMLO at various bit rates against Opus and here are the key highlights of our final round of evaluation. AMLO at 4.2 kbps is 1 plus more score better than Opus at 6 kbps while using only 90% of Opus compute. This equates to roughly 110% better quality than Opus at these lower bit rates. AMLO saturates quality faster than Opus. As a result, AMLO at 18 kbps is similar or better than Opus at 25 kbps. 
Even with objective evaluation tools like Polka, we are able to roughly capture the quality difference as you can see with the graph on the right. AMLO is much better than Opus on the lowest bit rates where we innovated the most and the gap closes down at higher bit rates. We were very happy with the offline evaluation results and thanks to the strict complexity criteria, we were confident in getting it out into the hands of our users quickly. Let's learn more about our production testing from Vikash. Thank you, Jatin. I'm happy to share our results from getting this new codec in our production apps. Opus has been the main codec for our family of apps and has been optimized heavily over the years. As you can imagine, replacing such core piece of technology with better quality is really hard. We performed extensive A-B testing in production comparing Opus against MLO and we are excited to share that as of today, we have launched our MLO codec for all calls on Instagram and Messenger and a major part of WhatsApp calls. In addition to audio quality improvements, MLO also allows us to improve video quality by lowering audio bitrate without compromising quality, we can give more bits to video, therefore improving video quality. We saw significant user engagement gains, call survey rating improvement for each of our launches. We started in this journey two years ago to build new audio technology that provide great quality for our users. We are excited about the results we were able to achieve with MLO and are actively working on getting it in the hands of more and more users. We will be rolling out MLO fully across all our calling surfaces and call types. We also intend to optimize it further to provide industry leading call quality to our users for years to come. Thanks for listening to the talk. We hope you enjoyed it.